Hi there, I'm Tom Field. I'm Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. Very pleased to welcome you to our webinar today. Our topic, fast track your IAM and IGA initiatives with a repeatable plug and play process. Here to tell you all about it is Wade Ellery. He's Field Chief Technology Officer with Radiant Logic. But before I bring Wade onto the virtual stage here, let me give you a little bit of background on our session. According to Gartner Research, nearly half of IGA projects are in distress and some fail to get off the ground entirely due to identity data quality and accessibility challenges. All identity projects must start with an understanding of all requirements. Getting this data right is at the heart of a successful identity project. Without an authoritative data source, teams can spend many months mired in custom configurations. Improved data quality is essential for more confident decision-making in complex environments. So, in this session today, we'll take a deep dive into identity governance, including the best practices for improving identity data quality, how an enhanced identity data pipeline can jumpstart stalled IAM and IGA projects, and how to deliver agility and speed time to value. Now, a bit about my organization, Information Security Media Group. We are a 17-year-old global education and intelligence firm. Our headquarters is in Princeton, New Jersey. You may know us, of course, by one of our 35 media properties. These include bank info security, healthcare info security, and data breach today. In all, we reach an audience of over 1 million security leaders globally and give them a daily diet of news, analysis, research, events, and educational programs just like this one. A few notes of housekeeping. If you have any questions for Wade, you can submit them anytime via the chat window that you see on your screen. I likely can't get to every question today, but for those questions we don't answer in this session, we'll get responses back to you via email. Should you encounter any technical issues while viewing today's webinar, please take down the email address you see on your screen. If you write to, write to webinars at ismg.io, we've got support staff standing by to help. A reminder as well, today's webinar is copyrighted material meant for today's session and individual study purposes only. If you'd like to use any of the information presented today, or if you're looking for customized training materials, please contact us. And let us meet our sponsor today, Radiant Logic. Radiant Logic, the enterprise identity data fabric company, provides the cornerstone of complex identity architectures in today's digital world. With Radiant, it's fast and easy to put identity data to work, connecting many disparate data sources across legacy and cloud infrastructures in real time without disruption. Their solution creates a solid identity foundation that speeds the success of initiatives, including single sign-on, M&A integrations, identity governance and administration, cloud directory deployments, hybrid and multi-cloud environments, customer identity and access management, and much more. From the Fortune 1000 to government agencies, organizations around the globe rely on Radiant to deliver meaningfully faster time to value and unprecedented IT agility when building a secure, future-proof identity infrastructure that meets real-world business demands. And now let's meet our speaker, Wade Ellery. He's got extensive experience in enterprise IT, direct and channel software and services, sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IGA, risk and compliance and IT security challenges, and we're going to tap into every bit of that now. Wade, thanks so much for being a part of this session here today. Thank you, Tom. My pleasure. And uh, thank you again for having me. Wade, let's start here. Talk about IGA projects. Why are they in particular so intensive from both resource and time perspectives? Well, if you look at the space of identity management in general, uh, the IAA projects are actually closest we get to try to boil the whole ocean. They try to take on everything at once. And, and that's been a challenge for us as an industry. I think in a large degree in the past, we've overpromised that one IGA project, one IGA solution, one IGA product was finally gonna do everything for you. And it spans such a wide area from onboarding and provisioning to governance, to segregation of duties, to policy enforcement and auditing. So it really is a, an elephant that has many different parts. And when an organization just goes into this type of project without a clear plan, without a, a model for eating the elephant one bite at a time and tries to take on too much, resources get scattered, 
focus gets lost and you get mired in the challenges of just getting this elephant off the ground. And that's where most projects start to get slowed down or end up narrowing scope and declaring success early because there was just too much to take on. Wait, is it true that nearly half of these projects are in distress or stalled? That's what we hear consistently, both from customers we talk to, to integrators we work with, to the analysts. Uh, there are very few of these projects that ever achieve the original goals that are laid out. Again, scoping may be a challenge, but I think also the amount of complexity and the amount of diversity that the uh, projects are taking on start to quickly mire these solutions and slow them down dramatically. And so against goals for budget, for time, for performance, they always come up short. Um, I was at a, a webinar or a webinar a session at a conference a couple of years ago, and somebody declared they'd been at it for 18 months. They'd integrated three applications and two sources and everyone applauded. And we looked around at each other going, oh my gosh, that is not gotta be the standard that we try and live to. We have to be able to do more. So failed or stalled, it sounds bad, but how bad is it? What is it risk if your project has failed or it's been stalled? Well, the original plan, the reason for this, and, and there's many drivers for uh, IGA solutions. One may be the initial promise of, of when someone comes on board, they get everything they need day one, modeled specifically to what they need to do their job with a minimum amount of over provisioning. When that doesn't happen, your people are back in that cycle of waiting weeks or months or frustrated and not able to do their job. And you lose productivity, you lose functionality, you lose the spark of that new hire. But on the flip side, we're also trying to audit what we've already done. We're trying to understand, am I compliant? Am I meeting the regulations for my industry? If I'm in healthcare or finance, I've got major challenges with meeting the requirements of the federal government and the auditors to be able to prove who has access to what and why. And when I can't see across my organization because my project stalled before I got out of the barn, then I'm gonna have a real hard time showing my auditors I actually know what's going on. And when I don't know what's going on, bad operators get to do bad things without being discovered. And we get into the, the model now where people say, it's not if you when you find out you've been breached, it's you've already been breached and you'll eventually run across it. If I don't even know what's happening in my organization, I don't even know that I'm being uh, attacked or successfully penetrated. So Wade, let's talk about the repeatable process we discussed at the outset. Start here. What's needed at the very outset of such a project you know, requirements? Well, really what you wanna do is you wanna take a look at what you do in other parts of your life. So you wanna bring in a professional, first of all, you wanna bring in someone who's done this before. If I was going to move my, my five bedroom house that I had three kids in and they all are off to college now and I've got rooms scattered with things left over from their childhood and other things, I'm not gonna necessarily in my middle of my full-time job try and figure out how to get all this sorted out and dealt with and boxed up and put into a, a moving van and taken away to my new home. I'm gonna bring in professionals that understand how to look at something, how to understand and scope the, the nature and the challenge of something, how to build that budget. But it starts with understanding what you have. It starts with looking at, at an inventory of the information, the data, the systems that you have today, and what is the quality of that information? If most of my rooms in my house are empty, my kids were forced to take all their stuff with them, I have very little to pack. I can, make, I can easily move it into a smaller space. If I have a ton of extra furniture and I've got closets full of clothes and I have things laying around on the floor, I have a different project to take on to, to move all this information. And this is what I'm looking at in my internal environment. What's the nature of my data that I'm gonna be using to make my governance decisions? What systems do I need to be able to gather data from? What systems do I need to be able to deliver information to? And what's the quality of the nature of those platforms? How easily are they gonna integrate when I do get data out of them, can I count on that information for being accurate? I have data in multiple places, what's authoritative? There's a lot of discovery there to figure out where I am before I can plan out where I'm gonna go. So follow-up question, how does one ensure data quality? Well, you really first have to get visibility. The, the challenge we've had as an industry is a lot of our products, even Active Directory, it holds a large amount of information, but there's not a simple way to go into AD and C information and patterns and anomalies across that system. So you need to bring in business intelligence software. You need to bring in tools that can look at that data and recognize things like missing attributes. 
and recognize things like overlapping attributes that should be unique that aren't. Uh, and, and attributes you can use that are uh, suitable for joining together multiple sources because you're going to start building a profile of a user across the organization. So that data has to be able to feed that particular model or that engine. So it's really a discovery and analysis process and then mapping out where your gaps are. What do I need to get done before I start? What can I do today to start and catch up later? Can I paint the car while I'm driving down the freeway? Follow-up question again. What are some best practices for improving identity data quality? Well, again, first you want to gain visibility. You want to have a tool like Radiant Logic that can go into the systems without disrupting them. You've got a business that's operating already. It's running on those platforms. So if you actually stop people from working or you disrupt what they're doing or you push down changes because you're trying to standardize things and it disrupts the back end, then you're quickly going to be called to halt. But if you can do this work with the tool like Radiant Logic to bring the data up to an abstraction layer and let you work on that data without disrupting anything, then you can run analysis tools across the data. You can determine where you have gaps in the information. It's also a challenge that most of my data is in disparate systems. If you think of it as the United Nations, every data set's a different country with a different language, a different set of customs. They don't all mesh together in the same room. They need someone as a universal translator that can understand first name in one system and given name in another system and F name in a third system is the same attribute so I can bring those together. So there's a lot of analysis of the quality of the data, but also the nature of the source and how I can make that more integratable into my platform. So Wayne, talk to me about this. How then can an improved identity data pipeline jumpstart these stalled projects that we discussed a few moments ago? Well, there's really a lot of places again to attack this elephant. So you wanna take a look and see where are you stalled? Are you stalled in just getting data into your IGA system? If I've rolled out my IGA platform, I'm only connected to one or two backends. I spent all my budget writing custom connectors in Java to make that work then I'm, I'm stalled there on just getting data in. So anything else I do using the wonderful tools inside the IGA product for segregation of duties or role mining are gonna be empty. So I need to go back and, and look at my sources, look at my data, how can I clean that up? How can I prepare that data? How can I make that more quickly and easily ingestible into the system? Sometimes it's just performance. I have so much data, it takes more than 24 hours to load it into an IGA platform because the load is slow. So can I optimize that system? Can I tee up that information so it can be brought in much faster to the platform and I can get things done in a reasonable time frame? Or it may be a scenario where I've done some work in the system, but I don't know if my endpoints actually have the uh, data that the policies are enforcing. I've built rules in my IGA platform, but I have no out of band audit in my system to say, did that provisioning for Tom actually take place? Does Tom's profile look like I believe it does? So I need to start doing analysis on the result and comparing it with the intent to see if what I've built is actually working. I could easily have, have built a, a road map to get to New York and it ended up in Houston if I made wrong turns the whole way and didn't know where I was going. So wait, with all this done, is it truly possible that agility and time to value can be increased by up to 80%? It can, and that's what we're actually seeing with uh, analysis done by analysts like Gartner and with our own customers. Um, again, it's a matter of uh, deciding where the most effective uh, move can be made. What is the, the, the grain of sand that's blocking the wheel? Uh, where can I break that loose and get things rolling? If it's getting data into the system, when you have a purpose-built tool like Radiant Logic, we're designed to absorb information from any backend source and protocol that we can connect to. We have tools built in that are mouse driven or command line driven, very graphically run to be able to do data cleanup, data analysis, data correlation. So you can prep that data a lot faster. And the benefit is you're not only doing this work for your IGA platform, but all the, in, all the integration cleanup Correlation work you're doing in Radiant can be used for your access management system. We have customers with PAM deployments coming back and saying, God, I'd love to get my data out of my AGA platform into my PAM platform because I did all that work to get it all correlated and cleaned up, but I can't reach it. With Radiant, you do it once and then use it all across the organization because these challenges are similar for all major integrations, whether it's access management, PAM, or IGA. IGA gets a lot of press because it, it has a large scope of promise around it. 
Um, so that, that ability to bring in radiant actually makes that a lot faster. And then again, being a non-disruptive out of band a capability of seeing that information and presenting it lets you quickly do compares between intent and result and get to the kind of differential analysis that you need. Okay, you know I'm gonna ask you more about Radiant. How are you helping your customers approach these challenges? Well, really it's, it's sitting down with them and, and looking at, at what they currently have done. Um, a lot of them are in early stages. I haven't done anything yet. I'm getting ready to do an IGA deployment or I have an old homegrown system I built 10 years ago that did provisioning, I need to replace it. I may or may not have picked my next IGA product. That's great. This is the time to lay Radiant down as the foundation. Let's get in and start bringing all the identity data into a composable model where we can tee it up and basically serve it to your IGA project and skip that whole 50% of your project is trying to get data in. Do that for you up front. Again, it pays dividends across the platform uh, for other systems, but it's gonna jumpstart your IGA product. In fact, Gartner's notices that if you do clean up analytics, this kind of preparation ahead, you double the ROI on your IGA project. You get twice as far as you would have gotten, or you save half the money in overhead because the cost of doing this manually in IGA products is too high. And it's not their fault. It's not what they're built for. They're built to do the top end work of governance and policy management, segregation of duties. That's where they invested their IT and their, and their IP. Radiant Logic, we're the, the guys who are down in the foundation messing with the concrete and getting our boots dirty. We're happy down here. We're building that foundation and doing the hard work. So that, that's the first piece where we can have a really strong impact. For customers that have already rolled out an IGA platform, then it's understanding where did you not get to go? Can I quickly get additional data into your system and integrate that information? Or do you have data stuck inside your IGA platform that you need to use in other places? I wanna spin this data out and put it out onto a Kafka queue because my service now needs to do tickets for processing requests, but it's stuck inside that system. How do I extract that data? So how do I make the information I've invested and built already reusable across my organization? And all those answers lead us in the direction of where we can have the biggest immediate impact. Way before we wrap up here, are there some best practices or lessons learned you can share from some of your customer experiences? Well, I think, first of all, don't despair. Um, don't throw up your hands and say, we've done IGA three times and it failed three times and we're done or it's never going to work. It's understanding that if you set the scope of an IGA project properly, if you narrow things down to what you can do in a reasonable amount of time, then you can actually achieve the goals you're, you're looking for. And I think as an industry now, we are starting to tell people it's not a product. It's not one project. It's a journey. It's an evolution over time. IGA is a component that actually helps support the zero trust initiatives that we're hearing a lot about now, where I need to clean up my information, I need to get my data governed, I need to get my data stood up and available for my, my decision platforms. So recognize that you're in a, a journey now, and then also understand the strengths of your product. If you're bringing in a, a IGA point solution, it's not built to do data integration. It does it because it has to, it doesn't do it because it likes to. So if you lay that foundation with a product like Radiant Logic, now your IGA platform has something to stand on that can successfully integrate much more quickly, much more effectively. It will go deeper into the organization. It will get more value out of that platform by doing that. And it's going to give you the kind of return you were hoping for. So it's, it's nobody's fault that we got where we are. Um, I think as an industry, we somewhat um, overpromised potentially what IGA was supposed to do day one. But if you back up, plan, lay a good foundation, do the discovery and the cleanup, prepare your environment, just like you would do everything in a room before you painted the walls, you're gonna get a much better result when you're done. Things are gonna look a lot cleaner and you're gonna be much happier. So lay that foundation first and then take go forward with your IGA project. Whether you're starting fresh or you're in the middle of one right now, uh, reset if you can and, and see what you can do to make modular improvements in the system. What do you recommend our attendees do now? to assess where they are and how they can improve their approach to IGA projects? Well, I really, again, go back to my first statement, which is engage with a professional. Um, if you've got IGA folks on your team, that's a great place to start. Um, but again, the IGA skill set is really around the functional layer of IGA. It's around governance and, and role discovery and, and segregation of duties and those functions. The integration part 
the the driver knows how to drive the car the mechanic knows how to get the car running you need to bring in a mechanic to get that piece actually operational so look to either an organization like radiant that does this kind of foundational work and has professional services available to help sort of do the discovery and consultation bring tools to bear that make this faster and easier don't try and do this with spreadsheets you'll drive yourself crazy you can't see relationship you can't see across multiple disparate systems that way that's the old model that's got us where we are today and then take things as a step-by-step -step basis build a plan understand where you want to go set reasonable goals and then as you achieve those you'll start to build more credibility you'll start to gain more access to more systems your system will start to flourish so you want to have success up front that builds more success and more confidence in the organization it gets you another revived budget if you overpromise and underdeliver, then it's going to be like the last IGA platform. It's just going to sit there, not fully functional, waiting for the next shiny IGA platform three years from now to come out and try and solve all the problems automatically. Excellent, Wade. I appreciate your insight. As promised, we do have the opportunity to take some questions. I want to remind our attendees, if you haven't submitted questions yet, do so. Uh, we'll do it right through the chat window on your screen. I may not be able to get to every question, but those questions that we can't answer in the course of this webinar, we'll get responses back to you later via email. That said, I've got some questions. Wait, if you're up for them. Yep, definitely bring them. First one, if I already have an IGA solution, why would I need an identity data management solution? That's an excellent question, and we get that all the time. Um, and it was interesting. I was at the Gartner IAM conference uh, about a month ago now. Boy, time flies. Um, and a lot of the customers that we were talking to had long-term investments in their IGA platform. Some have been rolling out their platform for 10 years and doing a lot of integration around that system, but they still had gaps. They still had systems they couldn't get to. They had systems of record where the quality of data was not at a level that they needed to be able to consume. So it constantly caused frustration in the system, getting unintended results. They didn't have the visibility to their endpoint systems to know whether or not the data was actually, again, the, the result was following policy. They needed that out of band auditing. We're seeing that a lot in governed uh, environments like pharmaceuticals and energy and finance where the auditors really need you to be able to not only show them the process, but show me the result and prove they match. Um, and then you're seeing scenarios where there's additional platforms that need to be integrated into the system, but they're stalled. They're not able to easily get the data in. They can't understand the nature of the information. They've got square pegs everywhere and they've got new round holes and they're not fitting together. So those are the areas where Radiant Logic can help on an existing platform either get the project jump started if it's stalled, expand the scope of what you've already done by allowing you to quickly and easily plug things into what you already have. And the last point I'll point out is that when we, I almost tell it as a joke every time I talk to a prospect or a customer, but it, it gets nods every time. Most systems in IGA at some point are fed from an HR or multi -HR, multiple HR platforms. The HR team changes things arbitrarily without any regard for IT or provisioning or downstream IGA platforms, and it breaks stuff immediately. And it happens repeatedly, and, I, and HR just usually is disconnected enough not to care. So with Radiant Logic in between, we're a, a firewall or an insulation layer between changes in HR systems and the IGA platform. Something can be done on the HR platform. We can transform it back to the original model so that the IGA system, which has all this hard-coded, scripted processes, doesn't break immediately when someone decides to change a field in HR because it looks prettier. And if you go through any kind of major change, like a merger and acquisition, bringing on whole new HR platforms, new users, new constituents, having that, that Radiant Logic platform there makes that whole system so much easier to integrate into your existing IGA system. Wait, we've got a thoughtful question here. Where does cloud infrastructure and title management fit into this? Well, that's another great point. And, and um, where we're going now is, is really what I think we've all realized is a hybrid cloud world. I'm gonna be existing in an on-premise and in a cloud environment together for quite a while. I think we'll get off of on-premise the day after we finally stop using mainframes. And I was told 30 years ago, that was any day now. So I think we're gonna be in a hybrid world for a while. Now, what this does is it, it requires me to operate in, in two places at the same time. I've scattered my information further. So my IGA project 
needs to stretch farther out. It needs to understand the nature of data that's sitting in my traditional on-premise environment, but now also stand, understand the nature of the data that's sitting out in the cloud. And this is again where Radiant Logic can help be that place to aggregate information regardless of where it exists so that your IGA platform doesn't have to do a lot of extra work to work in two different worlds. And then the cloud management platform is recognizing that internally I have privileged account management for things like AD account uh, admins and, and root users in Unix and, and people who have access to the financial system at a high level to make sure that those accounts are secure. But in the cloud, I have additional management accounts that run things like my AWS environment or run my Azure environment. So I need to make sure that I'm actually monitoring and managing those platforms also. So it's a matter of can I gather information from more disparate systems and leverage my existing infrastructure to manage that data. So what you need is that translation layer. You need that layer that understands that this is a different entity in the cloud, but it looks like an AD admin in the way it acts and walks and talks. It's kind of a duck. So let me use my duck tools to manage it. If I can make that transformation with Radiant, I can bring a bigger circle of information from on-premise and in the cloud into my same existing management systems. Wait, one more question for you. What do you think identity and access and management can learn from the world of data management? There's a lot. There's a lot. And if you look at the world of data management, that the one of the first things data management does is it goes back to look at the quality of the data that it's using. It's, it does data analytics across the information because the old term we've, we've known in our business, I think you learned it probably in your first uh, IT class, garbage in, garbage out. If I put bad data into a system, I'm gonna get unreliable and bad answers. Now that is most dangerous in an IGA system because I'm putting bad information into my governance and my role management system that I'm provisioning people into the wrong systems. I'm not properly uh, analyzing the access that people have. So it's critical I have good data in in order to get good decisions out. So the, the data uh, management systems understand that concept up front, but also in addition to that, those platforms are able to consume large amounts of disparate data. If you look at the, uh, the growth of Snowflake as a, as a platform to aggregate tremendous amounts of database information into a common set of related data, because information doesn't have as much value when it's siloed, as it does when you can aggregate that information together. And once you've got that kind of data aggregation, you can start to make bigger decisions across more valued data and, and find out more things. Where I'm really excited about the trend is that we're moving towards not only big data lakes or aggregations of large amounts now of identity data, but it's identity information you wouldn't think about, like all the training information we have about you on what courses you're currently passed or taken, all your certifications you've had as a nurse or a surgeon, your, your standing in an organization, your risk scores, all this travel information we have about you, all that now is being aggregated together. And now I can start to use AI and machine learning tools that we're bringing in from the data analysis side of the house to really apply that to identity data and start to understand, is it reasonable that you have access to this resource? Is it something that you coming in at two o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night to, to get access to financial systems? Is that something I should say is okay or not? Well, actually this is kind of your pattern. I recognize that over time because you like to work late and you always wanna get it done before Monday morning. So that's reasonable and good. Adding more intelligence, Taking that from the data analytics world uh, and data management world is, is really an area where I think we're gonna have more power to apply to the quality of decisions we can make in the IT industry. Very well said. Wade, as always, I appreciate your time, appreciate your insight. Thanks for answering these questions. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom, as always. And of course, I wanna thank our attendees as well. We appreciate you took time out of your day to attend this session. I do trust that today's discussion provided some excellent new data points, new perspectives, to enable you and your organization to be even better prepared to tackle the IAM and IGA initiatives we discussed here today. As always, I look forward to seeing you again in one of our upcoming sessions. Until then, for Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you so much for giving us your time and your attention today.